And in seventh grade, which was the next fall, this kid on the school bus named Eddie Hilliker, we both shared an interest in music and he, you've got to listen to this album. And it was Freewheeling Bob Dylan. And that was my first exposure. And then the following year when, um, uh, you know, some of his songs became singles that played out of New York. I don't know what the rest of the country music scene was, but the New York radio stations were were great. But uh, Like a Rolling Stone was the longest song uh, at the time. It was six minutes and too long for, for the radio, but in the uh, junior high school dance, it was the, whenever that song played, I would go look for Nancy Black so I could dance with her because it's the longest slow dance song of the night. You know, it's kind of, I never even listened to the words. I knew nothing about it. it <laughs> so my early, I was too young to appreciate what most of the music was about. Although even in seventh grade, um, uh, how many rows must a man walk down before they call him a man? That, that those the album had songs on it that you could understand if you were suddenly becoming aware to the bigger world. And I, I don't think four and five year olds can be aware they can appreciate the music, but the awareness of what was behind the lyrics was already beginning to sink in. Even you know in seventh grade, we were reading civic. Uh, new stories in civics class, but it wasn't until a few years later that I really uh, connected to Dylan on the deepest level. And I had lost a friend uh, the first day of school, junior year, I was Paul Bearer in his funeral. And for three months, I was so emotionally distraught. It took me years actually to process the grief, but I felt like uh, TV and laugh tracks and all the stuff that was going on seemed so superficial. And it was like there was nothing that had any depth to it in our pop culture. And it, it, I was like, I was in such inward turmoil and struggle with, you know, and all of a sudden, it's all right, Ma, I'm only bleeding. I listened to that and I, I knew, it's like what we were saying earlier about social media, you find out you're not the only one. When I heard that song, I felt like I was not alone in the world. There's somebody out there who understands what's in my head and in my heart. And it was really where I connected. And I think every Dylan fan has some moment like that, I suppose, but that was mine.